Hi, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the one to five player game, Fantastic Factories, designed by Joseph Chen and Justin Faulkner, and published by Metafactory Games, who helped sponsor this video. Here, you'll be rolling out your blueprints and hiring contractors because the race is on to build the most efficient factories in the least amount of time, and your opponents aren't gonna rest until they've achieved industrial dominance. So join me at the table, and let's learn how to play. To set up, shuffle the blueprint and contractor deck into their own face down piles and then deal four of each face up in a row like this. Then you collect these tool label tokens and randomly place one above each of these four contractors. This is where these tokens will stay for the rest of the game. Nearby, also create a supply of the metal, energy, goods tokens, and white dice. I'm using some cups I have to organize these on the table, but they're not included in the game. Each person now collects a headquarters player board and four dice in their chosen color, along with one metal and two energy resources. Players are also dealt four blueprint cards from the top of the deck to hold in their hand, which they can examine, but should keep secret from the other players. You can also take one of these player aids, which can help when you're first learning the game, and then the player who most recently used the tool is given the first player token or you can just pick the first player randomly. And that's the setup. In Fantastic Factories, you'll be building structures that will earn you points and provide you with special abilities. You'll also have access to contractors who can give you bonuses, and you'll be comboing all of these effects together to try to generate the most points by the time the game ends. The game is played over a series of rounds, and each round is broken into two phases, starting with the market phase. Here, players will take turns in order, going once clockwise around the table, starting with the first player. And on your turn, you must perform one of two possible actions. The first option is to gain a blueprint card. And to do this, you take any one of the four face up in the row here and add it to your hand. Then immediately refill the space with a new card from the top of the deck. And these two rows here are known as the marketplace. But instead of taking a blueprint, you can choose to hire a contractor by purchasing any one of the four face-up options here by discarding a blueprint from your hand that shows the same tool symbol as the one above the contractor that you wish to take. That symbol is located in the blueprint's upper left-hand corner. So if I wanted this contractor, I would be able to discard this blueprint. Now, during the game, any discarded cards are put to the left of their related deck. Sometimes a contractor will have an additional cost, which is shown in its top left-hand corner. This here is the symbol for energy. So to hire this contractor, you need to discard a blueprint showing the wrench symbol, because that's the token above it, and you need to spend two of your energy tokens. Anytime you spend energy or metal in the game, return it to the general supply. When you hire a contractor, you immediately resolve its printed effect. This is the symbol for metal. So this means you would gain three metal from the general supply and then pick an opponent to also gain a metal resource. You'll also find this explained in the text here at the bottom. Now after resolving the contractor's effect, you immediately discard it and then refill the empty spot with a new card drawn from the top of its deck. So those are the two possible actions of the market phase. Either gain a blueprint or hire a contractor. However, before you do either, you always have one optional action you can perform first, and you'll find a reminder of this here on your player aid. So let's go back to the table and I'll show you how this works. This says you can spend one metal resource or one energy, and then you discard and replace either the face-up row of blueprints or contractors, but not both. Each player can do this once at the start of each of their turns, which can be a way to try to get better options for yourself in the marketplace or remove options that you think might be a little too good for your opponents. Now, once everyone has taken a turn in the marketplace, we move on to the work phase, where everyone will roll their dice and then perform their actions simultaneously. And there are three main actions you can take here. You can perform them in any order, repeating any as you like. So let's go back to the table and I'll walk you through how they work, starting with using your headquarters, which is known as your basic actions. Your headquarters is one of the places that you can use your dice, and your dice in the game are also known as your workers. Now, as you can see, there are three levels in your headquarters and three spaces in each level for a worker. And you can fill these in any order. And as you add a worker to your headquarters, you immediately resolve that level's effect. 
At the top, we have this research area, and it has an effect here that you resolve when you take this basic action. Now, anytime you see a black arrow, that means that if you pay the cost of the symbols shown to its left, you will gain the benefit of the symbols shown to its right. So this symbol here means spending a die of any value, which then lets you draw a blueprint card, which is what this symbol represents. Anytime you draw cards during the work phase, they are always taken from the top of the deck, never from the face-up options. I should also mention that if either of these decks ever run out, you reshuffle their related discard pile into a new deck. To place a worker in the generate level, these symbols mean that the die must either show 1, 2, or 3. And the reason for this X is because this means a die of a specific value. So whichever value of die you place into this level, you will then gain that number of energy tokens. So for example, if I place this 2 here, I'll gain 2 new energy from the supply. To add a worker to the mine, you must use a die showing either 4, 5, or 6, but no matter its value, you just collect one metal resource for each. So adding these two dice here would gain me two new metal resources. However, there is a special way you can gain even more items, and that's through a match bonus. If any two dice within a row are the same value, you gain one more of that item. So if I placed a second worker here where these two values match, I would draw a card for the die I placed, and then I would draw a second card because these values match. Now if instead these workers had been placed here, each of them would generate two energy, and then I would gain a bonus energy. Or if these two workers were placed in the mine, I would get one medal for each, and then a bonus medal for the match. Now on the other hand, if all three dice within a level match, you gain two extra of the item. So collectively, this would give me two energy for each die, plus two more energy. You'll find a reminder of this bonus on the left side of your building board right here. I should also mention that the resources, goods, and white dice, which we'll discuss later, are not limited. In other words, if you ever run out of any of these, just use a suitable replacement. Now let's talk about another action you can perform on your turn, building cards. To do this, you pay the cost of one that you are holding, and then you add it to your compound, which is the area beside your headquarters. The cost of a building is shown in its top left-hand corner. The very first symbol represents one of the tool icons, and to pay this, you discard another blueprint that you are holding that also shows that symbol there. So if I wanted to build this battery factory, I could discard either of these two cards that I'm holding. You then also pay any metal and energy resources as required. So in this case, two metal and one energy. During this phase, you can build any number of buildings as long as you can pay for them. But you can never have more than one copy of the same building in your compound unless its text at the bottom says otherwise. So I couldn't have two copies of the battery factory, but I could have several of this beacon as its text says here. You'll also notice some dots at the bottom. And this is how many copies of this card are in the game. The third type of action you can take during the work phase is to activate cards that you've built in your compound. And buildings that can be activated will have a black arrow. And again, this means that if you pay the cost on the left, you gain the benefits on the right. For example, the battery factory shows this symbol, which represents a single good. So if you spend four energy resources, you then take one of these tokens, and as you collect them, Add them to the card that they were created by, so you can easily keep track of where they came from. At the end of the game, each good will be worth one point. As you create more, you can also, at any time, exchange two singles in for any one of these two goods tokens. This here is the symbol for prestige, and many buildings will be worth a certain amount of them, as shown here, and that amount will be added to your final score at the end of the game. So whether a building produces goods or not, it may be worth a certain number of points. Sometimes a card's effect will require you to spend a die to activate it, and if so, there'll be a place to store it like this. The benefit shown on the robot indicates that you're to roll an extra die this turn. This means you take and roll a die from the supply. White dice are temporary workers that you'll be able to use, but are then returned to the supply at the end of the round. We're not going to go through every type of building or contractor that you may encounter in the game, but if you're ever unsure of how one works, refer to the appendix of the rulebook and you'll find all of them explained in full detail. 
The important thing to understand is that each building can only be activated once per turn. And to help you remember which ones you've activated, it's a good idea to either rotate the used building or just push it up within your line. You can activate your buildings in any order, and the benefits you gain from them might help you activate more of your buildings, chain together powerful combinations. Now, once all players have placed all of their workers and finished any actions they wish to perform, they must discard down to 12 resources and 10 cards in hand. Everyone should now take back their dice from cards they activated and their headquarters, returning any extra dice to the supply that were only meant to be used for that round. Then the first player token is passed clockwise and a new round begins. Rounds will continue like this until eventually a player has either manufactured a total of 12 or more goods or built 10 or more buildings. Players will then finish that round and complete one more full round after that, which then ends the game. Now each person totals the goods they produced on their buildings and the prestige points they gain from their buildings and the player with the most points wins. In the case of a tie, the tied player with the most leftover metal wins. If there's still a tie, the tied player with the most energy wins. And if there's still a tie, the tied player with the most blueprints still in hand wins. And if there's still a tie, the tied players share the victory. The game also includes rules for solo play detailed on these two pages, but those I'll leave for you to discover on your own. Otherwise, that's everything you need to know to play Fantastic Factories. If you have any questions about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below, and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at BoardGameGeek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get a notification anytime we post a new video. But until next time, thanks for watching.